Though House Darrington titled themselves Storm Kings, they were little more than gusts. Their kingdom in the Stormlands had been doddering to its end for the past few centuries, helped along by other houses, most of all by House Hora, who were nearly finished with a monstrous castle at Harrenhal. Too large and too costly a seat to rule only the Riverlands. King Argilac knew where the Ironborn would soon turn. You'd think a king who wanted to keep his crown would be wary of a man with fire-breathing monsters. But King Argilac Durandon wasn't called the Arrogant for nothing. Determined to arrest his family's decline, he sent an envoy to Dragonstone to enlist Aegon Targaryen and his dragons against his enemies. In exchange, Argilac offered lands he didn't have and a wife Aegon didn't need. For as the Valerians did, Aegon had wed his elder sister, Visenya. Then, as the Valerians didn't, he took the younger, Rhaenys, as well. Two sisters, two wives. Perhaps that's why he was so keen to get off Dragonstone. Aegon countered Argilac with courtesy. He sent his own envoy, requesting that Princess Durandon's hand be given instead to Aegon's closest friend and rumored half-brother, Aurus Baratheon. Argilac answered with a box and a note. These are the only hands your bastard shall have of me. Inside the box were the hands of Aegon's envoy. How long had Aegon been waiting for such a pretext? As his army prepared to sail, ravens flew to every great lord of the Seven Kingdoms. All bore the same message. From this day forth, there would be but one king in Westeros. Those who bent the knee to Aegon of House Targaryen would keep their lands and titles. Those who took up arms against him would be thrown down, humbled, and destroyed. Poor old Argilac. He couldn't even match Aegon in arrogance. Aegon landed at the mouth of the Blackwater River and raised a primitive Aegon fort in the disputed land between Harren's and Argilac's kingdom, so that neither could decide whose problem he was. Adopting the customs of the Seven Kingdoms, Aegon unfurled his own banner with a red three-headed dragon breathing fire upon a black field. Visenya crowned him with a ruby-studded circlet of Valerian steel, while Rhaenys hailed him as the first High King the continent had seen since the Dawn Age. As his lords and the gathered locals cheered him, Aegon named his loyal friend to a small council led by Oris Baratheon whom he called my strong right hand. The title stuck, and a bastard became the first hand of the king. But for now, Aegon's kingdom contained only a rocky island and a handful of fields. The other kings had larger armies, ships, castles, and thousands of years of rule. But Aegon had dragons. He had chosen for the words of his house, fire and blood. Before he was done, the rivers, fields, and skies would turn red.